but the youth commission the youth commissions, um, youth council 101. We're very thankful that you could be here. Oh, I guess I didn't know my thing wasn't on, but um, we just wanna go ahead and get started and introduce ourselves. So I'll start. Uh, my name is Sharon Bassett. I'm the public relations officer for NCAI's youth commission. And then I'm from the Winnebago tribe of Nebraska. And then I'll just hand it over to somebody else within the commission. Hi, I'm Madison Brown. I am the secretary of the NCAI Youth, Youth Commission. Um, I am Allegheny Seneca, um, part of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and I'm happy to see you guys all here. Um, my name is Charlie Earth. I'm one of the co-vice presidents for the Youth Commission, and then I'm also a member of the Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska, and super excited to have you guys here. Thanks, guys. Now, Scano. Hi, I'm Yananui Logan. I'm Deer Clan from the Seneca Nation, and I'm the Youth Commission co-president. Shop guide, Spanish chicken, Caleb Dash. I am I'm Jordan Akimelcha. Hello, Jordan Pipa Jiva. Hello, everyone. My name is Caleb Dash. I am a co-president with the NCI Youth Commission. Um, I'm also part of the Salt River P. Maricopa Indian Community here in. Uh, Arizona. Um, it's nice to see you all. Um, if we could have everyone else please introduce yourselves. Thais Law. My name is Dylan Brainard. Um, I'm part of the Confederated Tribes of Kuslo and Quan Thais Law. Um, there may be a few other of our members joining on the day, considering that we thought this was for five o'clock instead of four, but I saw the typo in a picture of ours. Um, so I was just like, huh, kind of joined up for it. Glad that I did though, but they might come on here soon. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Laura Arndt. I'm actually from Six Nations, also Haudenosaunee, Mohawk. I am joining from Ontario. Um, I don't have my camera on, but I suddenly feel very ancient as I introduce myself. I do a lot of uh, youth organizing here in Ontario, and uh, I actually just wanted to sit in, if it's okay with everybody, um, just to see what's going on. Most of my work is in uh, Northern Ontario in uh, what is called NAN territory. And uh, that's the Ojibwe and Ojibwe community. Is that everyone who's looking to introduce themselves or? All right, we'll just continue on. Is there anyone that would like to do our prayer tonight? I could do the prayer. Um, if you could all just bow your heads or pray in your own way, that'd be nice. But uh, dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this time that we have together to just discuss and just talk about starting youth councils and just talking about the youth in Indian country. And we pray they may help guide us and lead us in these discussions and they may help us learn from one another and grow and just better our communities and pray that you may watch over those who are sick and those who are afflicted and those who are struggling right now in these times and pray that you may help them and we pray that I may watch over them. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And with that being said, let's hop right into it. <laughs> let's see. Let me share my screen really quick.
While Caleb is doing that, thank you all for joining us. And we greatly appreciate your time in, um, you know, wanting to learn about this. Uh, again, thank you um, for joining us and hope you enjoy. All right, so let's hop right into it. Youth Councils 101. <laughs> um, let's just go right into it. So the first part about starting a youth council is your purpose. And so what I see in a lot of communities is just a struggle, a problem, an issue. And so a problem is a matter or situation regarded as unwelcome and, or harmful and needing to be dealt with and overcome. I know a lot of people see different issues in their communities and problems such as, you know, drugs, alcohol, climate change, cultural loss, you know, all these different issues. And Caleb, can you pause for a second? Um, your, oh. we can't see your screen. It's still loading. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, wait. Is, let's see. Can you see it now? There we go. Good job. Okay, cool. So let's see. Oh, wait. Where'd it go? There it is. And could you still see it? I cannot. No. No, that's weird. So you could see this? Yes. That's weird. Hmm. But when I put it in view, you guys can't see that? No. No, no, it just says loading. Okay. Yeah, I'll just, I guess I'll just leave it like this for now. But anywho. Yeah, so problems or issues that you see in your community. Um, and so what youth councils are really established or created for is change. And change is to make someone or something different or alter or modify. So when you change something in your community, it's just something you want to do. So say for like climate change, you know, you want to establish a youth council to fight climate change. So what are you going to do? You're going to, you know, pick up trash. Uh, I know here in my reservation, we have a river. So what we like to do is have, you know, river cleanups. Um, we also like to clean up the sides of our roads. Um, we like to schedule different events for just, you know, Earth Day, trash pickup, stuff like that. So that's what, just a little bit about your purpose as a youth council. And so now I just want to hand the time over to you all and just see you know, what issues do you see in your communities? Uh, I'd like to say a big issue in our community is the salmon decrease in population. Um, the waters around here in the Southern Oregon coast have started to get warmer and the cormorants have now created a different species of cormorants that have started to become an invasive bird life that have been destroying our old growth trees and also our cultural engagements. Um, we're just now starting to reclaim some of our language and more or less, um, we don't have a social media policy just yet within our tribe. So it's very hard to actually engage with some of the youth around here um, in the outside counties as well, because it's hard to have a kid look at a newspaper sometimes. That's the only thing we got so far. So I'd like to say that for the CT Clusi. Gotcha. I'll share one thing before we move on. Um, I would say just general um, higher education resources. I think that there's always advancements that could be made for our youth, um, environmental policies that should be advocated for um, beyond just general um, general environmental 
kind of cleanups um, and check-ins. And then um, leadership um, in the political divide and then youth representation within the council. Um, I think that those are all kind of specific things that I'm, I'm definitely concerned about and like to think about um, bringing to our, our youth. Anyone else want to go? And Lisa, if you could share that. Okay, awesome. There. Um, Let me know if you need next slide. Can I go? Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'd say the biggest issue, and um, we talked about this at the uh, at the uh, Washington, um, it's probably alcohol and drugs, which is probably a big problem. And um, I'd say it's a big problem. It's probably affected me with my parents as just a personal issue, but I think it's a big issue in our community. And it's just something we could, you know, bring up. Obviously, the council, our council, knows about it and has started to do things to um, fix, not fix, but, you know, attend the issue. And I think it could be brought up more within the community, like with the youth, starting with the youth, especially, like bringing them together maybe and kind of giving them like a home with like a youth council because um, we're starting a youth council over here. We haven't had one in at least a decade or so. And it kind of it kind of went dark because no one kind of no one kind of upheld that. And we're restarting one. And that was kind of one of our biggest issues, like was to like, you know, have like a place where like our youth could like feel safe with, like with other youth members. Cause we're kind of, we kind of don't have that in our tribe. Everyone's kind of scattered. Everyone's kind of on their own. Like me growing up, we had like a, we had like a drum group language classes, but like there was no one really like putting out the message that we could that we should come together and do this all together. It's kind of just been on like, you can attend it if you want, you know? And that's just one of the things I wanted to say. Yeah, thank you all for sharing. And now I just want to invite you all just, you know, think of different um, solutions in your mind, you know, like what can you do to combat, you know, the fish, fish population declining or alcoholism, you know, substance abuse, you know, um, Anywho, uh, Lisa, if you could change it to the next slide. And so with that in mind, I want you guys to start thinking of goals. You know, I like to use SMART goals, you know, be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound. So say like um, I'm a student, you know, and I need to study more. So what am I going to do? Well, specific, I'm going to study daily so I can achieve, you know, better grades, you know, is it measurable? Well, every month there's a quiz to evaluate how well I'm doing, you know, is it achievable? Well, as long as I'm focused in my schooling, you know, I'm focused on studying, then yeah, I believe it's achievable. You know, is it relevant? Well, yeah, right now I'm, you know, I'm in school right now, I'm trying to get my degree. So it's, it's right there, um, just trying to get my time better, you know, time management and time bound is it is it achievable by the time like I set this goal so say you know I'm graduating you know next month can I achieve my goal by the end of the month well yeah if I study more you know so just keep that in mind when you're making your goals you know because people like to see you know whether it's in front of a tribal council whether it's for a grant a uh, scholarship or just anything you know they like to see well how is this going to be achieved? Can it be achieved? How are you going to measure that? You know, is it relevant to our community? You know, like, for example, in my community, there's a lot of cultural loss that we're suffering. So that's clearly something that, you know, we focus on. And so say, if I want to make like a phrase book or something, can I achieve that? Yes, if I work with my cultural resources department in my community, I could definitely achieve it. Um, is it measurable? 
well, if we start on it, you know, this summer and try to finish by the end of next year, we could measure, you know, by doing like a page every month or like two pages every month. And so, yes, it's measurable. Is it achievable? Yes, with the right resources. Is it relevant? Yes. Is there a time bound set deadline? Yes. So it's achievable. Um, so just keep that in mind with your goals when you're working on these uh, different purposes for your youth councils. You know, you want to have that focus. You want to be prepared because you're also most likely as a youth council going to present these in front of, you know, tribal councils, Indian centers, schools. So it's good to have the goals out there, you know, ran on paper right in front of you. I know indigenously we, you know, orally talked about these things, but, you know, we're in this living in two worlds. So, but yeah, um, if you could go to the next slide, please. And now into bylaws. So when you're starting a youth council, you need bylaws. I like to call up the creation, creating the framework of your council. And so if you could go to the next slide. When you're making a youth council, you know, you need to have like your frame set. You need to have a name, you know, who are you? Who do you represent? Where do you come from? For example, my youth council that I'm a part of is the Young River People's Youth Council. We're located in Salt River, in the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community here in Salt River, Arizona. And so that's our name. That's where we're from. We represent the youth in our community. That's who we represent. And so our mission and purpose, you know, just going along with your goals that we talked in the beginning, the issues that you want to focus on, the purpose of your youth council, you know, what are you going to do? whether it be focusing on, you know, repopulating the fish, you know, alcoholism, you know, missing murder, indigenous women, land rights, uh, water rights, you know, whether you want to learn more about your different community programs, uh, learning youth leadership skills or just leadership skills in general, and just how are you going to implement that into your youth council? And so another thing is, how are you going to function? So when you're starting a youth council, how are you going to function as a youth council? Are you going to function like in a school uh, with your tribal government? Who are you going to like collaborate with and what is your purpose or goal? And so next would be, you know, why are you doing what you want to do? So say, for example, um, I'm trying to start like a youth council to fight alcoholism. Well, what we're doing is our goal. So our mission, you know, we want to work together in collaboration as youth of the community to um, talk about alcoholism. We want to start, you know, an AA group for our adults or, you know, our community members to talk together and just work out this issue and so that would be like in your mission um, and then we move on to membership so as a youth council you know what what do you need to become a member do you need to be part of like a community whether it be like a travel youth council do you you know there comes the blood quantum issue you know but uh besides that you know you're part of a community so you know you could limit it at like community members only, or you could you say, you know, hey, we wanna work with our brothers and sisters in this tribe or this group too, you know, this organization, or even as a school, you know, these students are only allowed because we're rivals with this school or something like that, you know, but uh, it's just that membership. And uh, then, you know, there's the age, you know, who, how old do you have to be to join you know, a youth council, you know, um, sometimes it's 14 to 24, you know, 16 to 21. There's different groups that just function differently based on the youth in their community. And so it's another thing to consider. And then you move on to your positions. So in your youth council, is there going to be like an executive council? You know, for our youth commission, there's two co-presidents, 
two co-vice presidents, a secretary, and a public relations officer. And so in this part of your bylaw construction, you want to go into, you know, your different positions and what they're doing. But I know some youth councils that I've seen, they have, you know, just a president, uh, a secretary, and a vice president, or some of them have, you know, two two presidents and one BP and a secretary. So it just it just depends how what functions with what. So um if you want to have like a school council or something, you know, you have like a public relations officer, you have your president, you have our chairman or chairwoman, whatever. And then how do those function? Or even, you know, if like different parts of the youth council say want to focus on some sort of issue within the community and this other group wants to focus on another issue, how will that run? Is there a chairperson to run those different groups, but still collaborate as a youth council? So that's another thing to consider when forming a youth council. And then going on to your duties. So as a youth come out, as a youth council, what are your duties? You know, what does each member contribute to the youth council? You know, do they have a goal, a long-term or short goal term that they want to achieve within the youth council? Or as an executive member, are there certain uh, initiatives you want to run with your youth council to get out, like, you know, during the time of voting season, there's a lot of youth councils that like to do the get out the vote. So they'll collaborate with one another under, you know, like a chair or they'll all collaborate together to just get people in their community to, you know, sign these sheets that they're going to go vote, uh, where their polling stations are and stuff like that. And so it's just remembering your roles as a youth council and uh, stating that within your bylaws so that way everyone knows, you know, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I have to do this by the end of the year. Oh, I have to do that by summer, you know, just setting those time bound goal oriented applications into your youth council. And then we go into elections. So a question to ask yourself is how are people voted into office and what are the parameters of the place in place? So say I want to run for, you know, uh co-president of the youth commission well i have to be you know 14 to 24 years old um i have to be uh, recognized in a recognized a federally state or tribally recognized tribe as part of the nci um nci group and so you know you just have to have different parameters so who can run for president or even like with unity you know they have in their bylaws, you know, um, that if they want to run for president, that they have to serve one year as like a representative within their region. So that's another thing to consider when, you know, forming your youth council or youth commission. Um, Lisa, if you could wait, actually, anybody have any questions? Um, this isn't a question, more of just a statement. Um... In my past, I was on a student government. We had subcommittees and that was a way that people could be involved in their like specific interests while still working towards one goal. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is you need to be able to answer your who, your what, and your why. Those are usually your three most important things. Um, when would usually just be like if you're working towards a specific event, but the who, the what, and the why are kind of your more important things when getting started. Yes, I would agree. Those are very important. So thank you for sharing that, Sharon. And uh, I know that was a lot of take in, so I just want to say you're all doing really great. <laughs> and so I'd like to share this quote with you by uh, N. Scott Mama, Ma, Mama Day. And it says, we are what we imagine. Our very existence wow. consists of our imagination of ourselves. So with that in mind, you know, what your purpose is as a youth council or a youth commission, that's what you're imagining, you know, your perfect community, what you want to build 
or what you want to do with your youth council. So that's just a little something to share with you. And and Scott Mamaday is actually a a great author. You know, he wrote several books uh, during the first Native Renaissance, as they like to call it. So he's a Kiwa. But anywho, if you could go to the next slide, Lisa. And now on to more framing. <laughs> Um, and so vacancies, you know, resignations, removals, they're important to have because you got to remember, you know, nobody's perfect, no council is perfect, sometimes things just happen, but what's in place there when things do happen is important. So, you know, say I, I had to leave the youth commission because I had family issues or different things that were occurring in my life, and so I didn't feel like I fulfilled my role, well, what's going to happen since I'm leaving. And so then, you know, people, there, there's that in place in the bylaws that say, oh, well, you know, you have six months to find like a replacement or uh, hold another election just to get through. So it's good to have different things in place when you have a youth council or a youth commission, just in case any emergencies occur or anything. Um, and then on to meetings, when will your meetings occur? you have to have that stated in your bylaws because it's important just for functionality of your youth council or youth commission. You know, if there's meetings every week, bi-weekly, or once a month, or just anything like that, when are your meetings scheduled? Are they on the Tuesday, the first Tuesday of every month, second Tuesday of every month, or Wednesday, or just anything like that? It's just something to consider so that way everyone, you know, knows when to show up to youth council or youth commission meetings, uh, when different things will be talked about. And so then it's like, how long will these meetings be? How will they run? Uh, you know, are people being checked, you know, within the youth council or youth commission you're forming? Do people have certain responsibilities, like as a secretary, fulfilling, you know, writing down what happens during the meeting, who's presenting, uh, who all showed up, just different things just to show, you know, progress and management within the youth council or youth commission. And then lastly is on to amendments. You know, amendments are important to any youth council or youth commission because people are always changing. Times are always changing. So, you know, we need to adapt along with that. So say, you know, we pass a resolution saying we want to do this. Well, and then we look back at it and we're like, actually, we might want to change this phrasing or we want to change this goal or we want to change this time deadline. You know, you could always be able to change that and just continue with your goals or different things that you feel need to be changed. But anybody have any questions on that last part? If not, we can move on to the next slide. And so here's an example of just our youth commission bylaws representing NCI. And you can see, you know, our purpose there is to represent the native voice within Indian country and to help assist, you know, the NCI executive committee, as well as the NCI organization as youth. And there's our name right there, you know, we're the NC National Congress of American Indians Youth Commission. And you could see the officer positions, you know, we have two co-presidents, two co-vice presidents, a secretary and a public relations officer. And then you have the duties of, you know, our different positions for co-presidents right there, you know, shall be a spokesperson and representative of the NCI commission, uh, preside at all NCI youth commission meetings, shall attend and prepare an, uh, an agenda 72 hours prior to any upcoming events. And then even with our membership, you see, uh, has to be between the ages of 14 to 24, uh, member in good standing with NCI, and just the NCI Youth Commission officers shall be elected by the youth present at the NCI annual convention and marketplace every two years. But that's just an example of the how the NCAI Youth Commission operates. And then, of course, we have more that go on, but that's just a little sample of our youth commission bylaws and how we operate as a youth commission. Uh, any questions?
going once, going twice. Okay, Lisa, if you could change the slide. And now on to promoting funding and advisors because promoting a youth council is important as well as getting funding to operate as a youth council. And of course, our amazing advisors are always needed. Um, so if you could just go to the next slide, Lisa. So number one, promoting your youth council because you know, you wanna get more people involved within your community. You wanna get youth councils running and going with more youth just to help you know grow different ideologies or ideas that you have for your community to make it you know your ideal or perfect community and one way to to do that is through social media so things like instagram tiktok facebook snapchat twitter you know we have all these different social media tools at our dispensary and just we could you know use them to reach out to young people old people people of all sorts. I know even using like a newspaper is a great way to reach out to people or community flyers. And so it's good to get youth or people involved that way. But another way, you know, is food. <laughs> As natives, we all love food. I know um, there's a lot of youth councils out there or groups that are out there within my own community. They like to have like fry bread sales or, you know, bake sales or just give out food and that helps with their funding, but it also gets people, you know, to come show up, people to interact with them and just uh, learn about the different ideas or things we wanna do to help benefit our communities. And then lastly would be service, you know, go to community events, you know, serve when you can, you know, elders, uh, tribal leaders, anyone's out there, they're willing to listen. And when you're helping the community, you know, you're helping each other and people look at that and they see that and they look up to people. And so it's nice to see that service provided in our communities and just having youth, you know, be at the front of that to help get other people to come join. And, you know, when you're starting a youth council, seeing other youth out there doing these different community events or going out to serve, it's an inspiration to us all. And just wanting to be like, hey, maybe I want to be like that person. And so it's just, well, hey, you should come to our youth council meeting or our youth commission meeting. So that's just a great way to get people to join. Does anybody want to say anything about that or have any comments or questions? Yeah, I got one. Um, I think it's important to lead by example and lead from the front. Um, people tend to follow, um, creating massive action. But um, when promotion, is there anything that possibly would be too much promotion? Say going door to door, not a Mormon myself, but like I think that was like the kind of extreme um, that it could possibly be pushed to, you know, giving gifts such as like a salmon off to their doorstep, you know, or actually wanting to speak with the parents to see if they'd be okay with that. Um, if they were to be under 18, I understand that. Um, but however, we do a 14 through 24. We've already had our resolutions um, agreed upon since 2015. Um, we're just trying to get these bylaws together um, in a way that to promote um, ourselves without having to use the newsletter or the flyers because it doesn't tend to engage our youth and particularly. I don't know. I can't say that for everyone, but I do know that our our youth does not seem to collaborate that well with that. Um, it's more face-to-face -face, um, that they're able to actually address situations and problem solve together, which is very fun to do. But again, you know, um, I was wondering if there's any other types of ways for promotion that we could do that may be necessary or deemed appropriate in these kind of situations, or I guess, is it just three we should really try to focus on or? My, my biggest advice to you is to meet people where they are. Um, for example, like my tribe, we have a big sign like downtown that you can like put information on it. Like there's everything on it from like happy birthdays to like what our month is in our language, stuff like that. But any event that is already happening or 
already kind of has a big following, reach out to those people who are putting it on and see if you're able to have a table there, have a booth there. If you're able to put a little bit of information about your, um, your group and what you're doing on the flyers. Um, if you meet people where they are for so long, there will come a point that they will come to you first. Um, there's no right answer to how you should be promoting your um, your council, your commission. As you kind of stated, like there's already some things you know do not work for your community. Don't feel pressured into doing those. Um, these were just some of like the main ideas that we had and that we use, but this, um, there's no one size fits all answer. You kind of got to look within yourselves, within your community, um, maybe reach out and ask some of your friends, ask other young people, like what would be a way to get information to you? Like maybe the newspaper is a way to go for you guys. Maybe the radio is, um, but you just need to look within. We can't necessarily answer that question for you, but we can tell you what works for us, but that does not mean it's gonna work for you, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Thank you, Sharon. Um, and then to kind of further elaborate, um, it's great for promotion and funding. Um, when we're writing grants, is there any kind of like um, basic information that we could use to kind of structure, maybe setting up a grant or getting funding? How would you guys go about that other than food sales? Um, I know. Okay. I know that amongst like, um, well, I know that NCAI will start being, um, being able to provide money, not so much grants, but I am aware, um, of like some certain grants, like that are federally, um, available. Um, my school is one of the only schools, um, in the United States that is located on a federal, on a federally recognized reservation that is state run. Um, and I have access to a bunch of grants. Um, my youth council functions on a grant, so I can be able to be able to provide you um, like what has worked and like the research that has gone into being able to establish these grants to help establish your own. Thank you, Madison. Mm -hmm. That is awesome discussion, guys. Um, also, if the youth commission if you guys could leave your emails in the chat for everyone that would be awesome and anastasia i see your hand is up so i'll leave the floor to you hi thank you uh but also i just want to add, like add and like give some ideas as well to you dylan too for like my youth uh council east side Native american education program up here in the pacific northwest let me turn my camera on as well uh, what we do, because our youth council covers three different school districts as well, it's sponsored by our school district. We actually have a Native American education coordinator in our district, Mary Wilbur, if any of you know her as well. Uh, and what we've been doing is pretty much open up to the entire public. So while we advertise, I guess advertise may not be the best word, but we put the word out there more so for Native youth. So all the schools know, okay, anyone who checks the, um, in that race section, if they check that they're Native American, they will recommend this program to them. So maybe that's something you can also work with your community as well of saying, hey, anyone that we know in the area that is in maybe by the reservation or anyone else is sort of like, hey, just have them know, like, this is a flyer they'll immediately get. If they're interested, like, hey, there's a, there's a community here as well. But also what we do, we um, like for when the pandemic was um, on its high note, we transfer everything to Zoom where it didn't just have to be our community. We were able to release it like like how uh, the slide says, use so much like social media. We'll put links on there. So something we always have a veterans powwow every year. And so we got to do this one over Zoom which was interesting to say the least, but it worked out actually really well because we did we did just get indigenous from the United States. We are indigenous from Canada, Mexico, different parts of South America, all coming to say their piece, share their wisdom, share their stories and advertise in that way that now uh, what, what happens is that anytime we do have the veterans powwow, 
those uh, same members or same speakers that were from internationally different parts of uh, the world or within another state have actually made the trip up to Washington to come to the powwow in person. And same thing with actually a sweat lodge as well. That was something that we do as a veteran sweat lodge, advertise that again, at least to the community, even if they're not part of the, the program, we put out to the other tribes in the area, like the Suquamish tribe, um, Sammamish, Tuolup, uh, Puyallup tribe, and there's 29 in Washington. So we try to give it out to all 29 if we can and see what is broadcast, what we can bring back to us. So uh, like sorry, been established is just networking in that area, figure out who's in your neck of the woods and who has connections and how can you utilize not just social media, but also Zoom or Teams or Google chat as well. And see if you can do any of your events online so they're more accessible in different parts of the community. Thank you, that was a lot and I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you guys for all the feedback and just all the information it's is great and just just like saying these are kind of just little things that work for us as a youth commission but there are also a lot of whole other ideas just promoting you know and there can be as you stated dylan you know over promoting things like you know if you post like 15 different reminders about an event in one day it's like holy cow that's too much you know but uh yeah, it's just finding what works with your community. But um, anybody else got any questions, comments, or different feedback? Um, yeah, I'd like to go. Um, well, I come from a smaller tribe. It's like a, it's like a thousand, I think. Yeah, yeah, probably about a thousand. Um, one way that we are promoting or are going to promote is um, obviously through fundraising, but. Um, I don't know how well this will work with bigger tribes, but um, but um, one way is that um, if you talk with your tribe, they might meet you halfway. Like if say you fundraise a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars, then they will meet you halfway and maybe give you a thousand dollars because you made five hundred. I don't know how well that'll work with other tribes, but that's one way that our tribe kind of lets us, you know, make some money to help with our funding and promotions. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know like just going back on the past points made from this PowerPoint is, you know, you have different collaborations you can make within, you know, your own tribal governments, your schools, or even just with different organizations. And so there's always the opportunity. Um, but if we could move on to the next slide. And now down to funding, just like said, you know, you have different ways that you could get funding. One way being, you know, if you're able to work with your tribal government, that's awesome. You know, you could always reach out to your tribal council during their council meetings or just uh, trying to collaborate with different government departments. Um, I know with like my youth council, we we were a part of uh, OCLA. Um, that's our community, you know, kind of. Uh, travel, um, outreach, and different departments of organizations that could help support, you know, a youth council go get their supplies, you know, because being a youth council, you need, you need paper, you need, you need pens, pencils, or even, you know, computers, just something to take notes of things, uh, catalog, and you need, of course, you know, money for like traveling. If you guys are going to events like uh, NCI's mid-year or annual conferences, or even if you're going to a unity conference or just any conferences in general, you need funding for that. So working with tribal governments is a great way to get funding. Another way is grants. There's always a ton of grants open, whether it be for just native communities or communities in general. Um, you know, you could always just look up, hey, I need a grant for, and then just, you know, type in whether it be like, you know, supporting like AA or supporting, you know, fish, ha fit, fish hatcheries or language and cultural development or just anything. You could find a grant for almost literally anything. And so it's just great to have, you know, the internet at our resource. 
um, as a resource to find these grants and even talking to other people for different funding grants available. Another way is through school funding. I know when I was a part of my uh, Mesa Strength Youth Council in the Mesa Public School District for Arizona, we had a lot of school funding for our Native American program, um, which was, you know, it, it was nice because, you know, as youth with the school, we put on different events to fundraise money, one being like a heritage night, or I know one of the schools in our district held a powwow, the Westwood district, uh, the Westwood uh, which is a school in our district had a powwow where they'd raise money, you know, so there's that school funding right there for events or just funding in general for your youth council or youth commission. And then there's always, you know, just the basics kind of, you know, car washes, uh, bake sales, you could have like a community raffling, you know, bingo night is a big night, you make great money off of that, trust me. Um, but, uh, you know, just finding like, we talked in, uh, before just finding what works with your community is a great way to figure out what you could do with your funding. And so uh, any questions on that comment? Is there anywhere we should look for specific grants or do we just Google salmon restoration grant into Google? Like, or do you prefer? I usually prefer, you know, like, I'll, I'll do that where I'll Google like different grants, but what I'll be precise or specific on is where that grant's coming from, whether it's from an organization, you know, .org, or if it's from the government, .gov, you know, you always want to remember that because if you use like a .com, you know, sometimes it's just kind of like a scam or things like that. So just remember to use different trustworthy databases and sources that you could find reliable funding from. Any anything else? If not, we can move to our next slide. And that is the role of an advisor. An advisor is very important for a youth council, whether it be starting up or you know continuing. Advisors are always great to have because one, if you uh, if you have an advisor, usually you know different requirements when. Uh, trying to find one is finding someone who's good with the departments within your tribe, or whether it be working with different organizations or finding grant research, you know, um, just having that advisor there to help find these different opportunities for you as a youth council um, to, you know, find funding, find different events going on. And, you know, an advisor is important for also meetings, you know, the sustainability of your youth council is, are in those meetings. And one way to have control, you know, to have different conversations within your meetings is to have an advisor there kind of as a mediator, you know, someone like, oh, and next on the agenda, you know, is like talking about how we're going to support something like Missy and Indigenous Women and your advisor would be there like, well, actually the community has these different programs uh, with our police force or, you know, with our tribal government. Or if you wanted to start like your own different like talking circle, you know, you could have that. But it's just like, you know, advisors are always giving great ideas and helping counsel and uh, keep track of things within, you know, the youth council, whether it be keeping track of the bylaws, the membership, resources, just anything. Advisors, you know, they're always there for you and that's a nice thing to have. Um, any comments or questions on that? If not, I'd like to go to our last slide, which is thank you for attending this amazing <laughs> youth commission discussion. I'm sorry about the interference that we had earlier, but it's still great to see you all and just have these talks because I know we all face different issues when the, within our own communities, but as you know, Indian country or people of Turtle Island in general, I like to see, you know, we're from different places, we speak different things, we talk about different things, we have different cultural backgrounds, you know, we grew up different ways, but the issues we see within our communities are the same. The different things we see happening around 
you know, the US, Canada, Mexico, anywhere you you see these different issues in every community that you see. So I just want to leave that with you. And if you have any questions or anything, my contact information is right here. Um, if my youth, my fellow youth commission officers could leave their confirm uh their their contact information in the chat, that would be awesome. Anyone like to say any last things? I'd like to say something really quick. Um, just as far as like promoting your youth commission and getting the word out there and getting, um, I guess, engagement. I think that this was something that I definitely struggled with um, like a year ago. And it started from like having like campfires in my backyard with like friends and talking about like what the issues are in our community that we want to like take an initiative on. And then establishing, I know um, Dylan, you mentioned having like no social media policies, but I know that for us, um, a way to kind of like step outside of like maybe a nation sanctioned um, protocol would be like to establish your own kind of organization that's outside, but still represents the the, the native youth of um, where you're from. And um, what I kind of helped establish was the Seneca Youngbloods and it was a community um, organization too. Um, it, sorry, I'm like losing my train of thought now. <laughs> um, it was a community organization to bring the youth together um, and and talk about what issues we we have we want to speak up on and what initiatives we want to take a part of. Um, and it brought us to some really um, fruitful conversations. Um, and we gathered usually about like ten to fifteen kids over the summer, um, like biweekly, having campfires at different people's houses. And I'm um, just continuing these conversations. Um, and so now where me and Madison are working on a meeting with our council to establish a formal youth council with a set of funding that they would um, contribute. And then like we want to find someone to work as an advisor to help us um, with initiatives, with with um, collaborating with people like NCAI or organizations like NCAI or Unity or um, CNAY. Um, and I think that when you reach out to different people in the community, like a lot of people are willing to help. Um, but also if you, if you, if you guys all want to reach out to us, um, we all have experience with youth, with the youth council in one way or another, um, either the absence of it or the great presence of it. Um, and we, we can offer some great insight and maybe connect you with some people who have written grants. Um, I know my, um, advisors at Cornell have written grants for our youth here. Um, I know like travel grants, research grants, um, community grants. So really you got to just kind of reach out, figure it out. Um, a lot of it is networking and finding the right people. Um, but, you know, the social media thing can be done on your own, even if it's not specifically sanctioned to, to, to your, your um, tribe. But that's, that's just kind of the one thing I wanted to say that I was thinking about the entire time. So. Hey, thank you so much. Honestly, that was like super helpful. So I'll uh, definitely hit you guys up for sure. And look how you guys are doing it. Definitely networking clutch. So um, yeah, just cool. <laughs> yeah, thanks for tuning in. Um, it's been great getting to meet you and talk with you. And thanks for everyone else to for tuning in and uh, helping contribute to this conversation. Yeah, thank you all for just joining in, listening. I'm excited to hear because I'm excited to hear if any of you reach out to us, you know, just how your youth councils are doing or the youth councils that you are still a part of or keep going, you know, I just want to say all your work that you do is great. And so just thank you for listening in and just joining and providing your comments and feedback. So thank you. That being said, um, good night, y'all. Good night.